so on. Hey guys, Frank Victorine. Um, I've had a couple of laps to run the new Techno 2.0 and I figured that I'd just give you guys a quick product review and tell you about some of the things that I expected and some of the things that I didn't expect. Well, to, to start this thing off, so how long have I been running Techno? Well, I started racing RC cars six years ago. I've ran RC, um, I've ran the brand ever since then. I've owned four EB484s, I've owned EB383s and twos and um, everything except for the very first car. So, and that's all I've ever ran. And typically I race somewhere between two to three times a weekend. Um, skill level wise, I'm, I'm either a, a, a fast sportsman or somewhere in the neighborhood of a, a low to a mid pack pro in most of the, 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 the bigger events. But, but anyhow, that's, that's kind of, well, that's as fast as I can go with as old and as blind as I am. But, but nevertheless, um, with, with all the hours and all the time that I've spent racing Techno, and, and granted, I, I own all of their cars, and, and I mean all their one-tenth stuff, all their, literally every Techno that they own or that they make. So, well, let, let, um, let me first, first talk about some of the things that I thought that they would actually do with, with the new platform. I, I, I figured that they'd probably go to more of a rear biased and they'd probably widen the car, which interestingly enough, that's exactly the, the two primary things that they did. When you look at the, and this is my 2.0 that I've, that, I, that I've put about three packs through, and you'll notice that the overall weight bias is more towards the rear. Um, historic, so, so in the past I have um, scaled Technos and I've also compared it to some other brands. So, so a Techno is not actually a front bias car, it's actually a mid bias car. When you put them on scales, and this is with a 5000 milliamp uh, battery pack, a hobby wing speed controller, and the big 150 amp speed controller, the weight distribution comes out on an EB484 to be exactly 50-50, I mean plus or minus a, a quarter of a percent. Where some of the other cars, most of the other cars were running somewhere between a 53 and a 54 percent rear bias. I have not scaled this thing yet, so I don't know exactly where the bias is at, but I can tell you that the weight has moved more towards the rear, and I can tell you that um, the car is wider. So, so how did this equate the first time that I drove it? Well, it, um, the, these are some of the things that I noticed. For one, um, well, and I'll, I'll first talk about turning. So older Technos that have a, a more of a, a, a front bias to them really don't have a tendency to, to, to come into a turn and want to pivot a lot. With more of a, a middle bias, the cars have a tendency to push evenly. So, so you just have to know that that's how a Techno turns and, and, and be able to drive around it. Um, <clears throat> this car obviously has a little more rotation. And I also noticed that it had way more, I mean, way more acceleration once you get straight up and, and going because there's more weight on the rear wheels. Um, the car actually was, was more stable than the old, old Techno. It's, it's almost as if um, the old Techno, you give it a, a little bit of input and it really responded to that, to that change in input where, this, where the new car seemed like you had to give it a lot more input to get it to move. Um, all expected. Um, does it turn better than the old Techno? I don't know. I can tell you that it's different. Is it faster? Well, I think that'll take some races and maybe learn how to drive a different platform of car to really be able to evaluate that. For, for the time being, it's definitely competitive. Um, it, in some cases, it could be considered that it's easier to drive. So, so that's what I can tell you about turning. So um, acceleration is better. Braking is probably about the same. Now here's the thing that I didn't expect. So I figured being front bias cars and having all the weight in the front on the original fours that it would be impossible to out jump a Techno, right? Because the reality is, is those cars are so stable in the air and they jump so straight and you know, they're just really easy for giving cars to jump. Um, generally, if, if whoever the promoter is put some really gnarly um, jumps on the track, I generally just smile because I know that I'm running techno and one, it'll jump anything and two, they're built like tanks and they'll take whatever you throw at them. And, and typically those types of tracks, technos really excel at. So how does the new 2.0 compare um, to the EB484s? It, uh, surprisingly enough, it actually jumps better, which is amazing. Um, you, you, you can definitely set the car up easier um, in you know, in the air to set it up for a, for a turn, which 
at some point, maybe down the road, may equate to a faster lap time for today. It, it probably won't. Um, but I was presently surprised at, at how well the cars jump. Um, what else can I tell you about it? All the diffs. Guys, don't put 10,000 weight diff in that thing when it's brand new before the diffs are weighed. So I put, so I ran 755 and I felt like the diffs were still way too tight. Um, I'm actually going to drop the center diff down to three. And granted, this isn't a permanent change. This is just a change um, before the diffs start to break in. And then after the diffs break in, then I'll probably end up being something like 755 or somewhere in, in, in that neighborhood. Boy, I can definitely tell that the, the rear end, in some cases, when you got on the throttle, really wanted to overpower the front end. And I could just tell that it had just way too much um, center diff and, in some cases, rear, rear diff. But, but anyhow, that's a new setup thing. Um, as far as long-term durability, I have no idea what will break if, if anything. As, as far as um, build quality, the, the instructions were perfect. The cars went wrecked together. And granted, I don't actually build these cars. Jenny builds these cars. And that, oh man, if something's wrong in the instructions, I sure do hear it. And, and that all, all she had to say were positive things on how easy the car was to build and how, easy the and how good the instructions were. Um, so, so overall, um, I, I think I want to put a couple more races on this thing and just see how it does and see if I can figure out how to adapt to a new type of driving platform. And ultimately, you know, the, the, the $100 question was, is, is my second to my one and a half seconds in this new platform? Because the reality is, is where I've been, when I look at the top running pros, at least from a, from a local standpoint, you know, those guys are generally somewhere in the neighborhood of about that time frame difference. And if I could pick that up, and of course, if I can get that for, you know, the 10 minutes, that heck, that equates to, you know, half a lap to a lap. It's a, it's a tremendous difference. And, and I think with the cars being able to pivot more in the air, the fact that they have way more, more rear traction, um, and the fact that they're, they're, they're a lot more stable, um, I, I think that it's promising that these cars could potentially be faster. I just haven't had enough time to actually prove that. Anyhow, I, I, um, um, I really figured that, that for some of you guys that, that, that run this brand and haven't got yours together, if you'd really like some input, some input on, on what are some of the differences and, and, and why, um, I, I figured that I'd, that I'd take a few minutes and just try to get that out to you. So, so thanks guys, I'm gonna head out.